Hey guys, Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and this is issues number one. I guess first and foremost, this is a new weekly segment that I'm going to try to do every week where I tackle some sort of news issue, usually something that correlates with my weekly podcast, We Geeks. Check it out, wegeekspodcast.com. Good stuff. Myself and Howard Pinsky. Well, I'm saying it's good stuff. Maybe you should give it a listen and determine that for yourself. But anyway, this week I want to talk about uh, Photoshop Touch. So Photoshop has announced that they're no longer supporting Photoshop Touch. They're kind of kicking it out the window. Um, it's still available, as you would expect. Uh, to download with either your iTunes or your iPhone or Android device in the iTunes Music Store. Um, however, uh, Photoshop's not, not going to be updating it or anything like that anymore. Now, if you had a an Android device, you already knew that Photoshop was not really updating Android. It did, seems like it had been forever since they updated it. But Photoshop really seemed to limp out of the gate, or I should say Adobe really seemed to limp, uh, limp out of the gate with this one because it was very, very underwhelming when they launched it. I was running the uh, Photoshop group for the city of Philadelphia and when it first came out I was supposed to be behind it because Adobe was sponsoring the event and Adobe was gung-ho about it but you know you had this limitation of like 16 layers 1600 by 1600 pixel document just huge limitations and we had the iPad at that point there were various Android tablets it actually came out on the Android initially before it even came to the iTunes uh, store but it was just very very underwhelming what you could do with it was kind of eh um, it was big enough to be bulky and clunky and too much, but not small enough and streamlined enough to know exactly what you were doing with it when you went into it. When I have a photo on my mobile device, I like to be able to go in to Visco or Snapseed or whatever it is that I'm using. I know exactly what I'm doing with it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the other thing. Export it out and it's either going Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, whereas Photoshop Touch was a little bit more, it, it just seemed to lack uh, some oomph. Like Adobe, I don't know, I don't want to say they didn't try with it, but it kind of came across that way and there wasn't really much about it. And, and I think it was 10 bucks. Um, so you're paying for it on top of all of that. You know, pair that with the fact that Snapseed, you can get it for free. Visco Cam, you can get it for free. Um, so Adobe wasn't really um, even competing when it came to that. So they're canning it, they're doing away with it. I say good job Adobe on getting rid of it. Um, it was never really meant to be anyway. I don't know if they entered the marketplace a little bit too early, maybe. What do you think? Too early? Were we just not ready for it? I don't know. Um, but they are working on another project codenamed Riggle, R-I-G-E-L, Riggle, Regal, something like that. Uh, Riggle just kind of sounds a little Teletubby-esque. Anyway, um, Riggle, and there was a, a video that's been floating around the internet where Brian O'Neill Hughes, I believe his name is, is demoing it on, I think, an iPad Air 2. At least that's what the UI looks like. And uh, it's handling photos from the new 5D SR, which is a 50 plus megapixel camera. So huge, huge files that it's handling. So that's really exciting, really cool. It looks like there's going to be an emphasis on non-destructive editing uh, with the new app, which is also pretty cool. We just saw Snapseed 2.0 come out, and that has a lot of non-destructive editing options as well. So that's really, really great. Um, also, big news for people who are Creative Cloud subscribers, it's going to be free as long as you have your Adobe ID. So you're not going to have to pay anything to download the app. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but you're not going to have to pay for it if you have uh, an Adobe user ID and are a paying customer uh, of Creative Cloud. So a lot of really exciting stuff for Photoshop Touch, but I guess the bigger question is, do you think there's room for another photo editing app and something as maybe robust as Photoshop if this is gonna be more of a full-fledged version of Photoshop? Um, I feel like having to pay for it is gonna limit it because there are a lot of great free apps. I feel like having to have a Creative Cloud subscription, people with Creative Cloud will download it, maybe use it a few times, but I still can see myself downloading it, playing around with it, saying, all right, I'm done, I'm back to Snapseed, or I'm back to Visco, wherever I was before. So what do you think about it? Do you think it's something that Adobe should be focusing time on? I'm not really sure. I mean, if they got the money and the development, sure, why not? I can envision a day when we're doing full-fledged edits on big, you know, tablets and the, the new Microsoft Surface Pro, I believe is what it's called, um, is an amazing tablet-laptop combo, really powerful. Kind of impressed by it, to be honest with you, the first time I picked one up and played with one. Um, but what do you think? What do you think about mobile Photoshop? Are you just a fan of if I'm out taking photos and I need a computer, I'm tethered? 
Or are you somebody that feels like, hey, I'll take a photo and I'll Wi-Fi it to my phone and I'll do a, an edit of some sort right there and post it right to the internet or send it to a client? Or how do you handle it? What do you see as the future of mobile Photoshop? And is it a good idea for Adobe to be spending this, time of time, this kind of time and money um, focusing on that sort of thing? So that's it for the first TutVid issues. Again, if you want to hear a little bit more about it, Howard and I talk about it in the WeGeeks podcast. I'll have the link to that right down below here, um, and you can check it out and give it a listen for sure. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for so much for watching. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. This is issues number one.